Folks, I've had my hands full and wet over the last few weekends putting together a grow out tank for Crebenza Cichlid Fry. Here are the culprits. My pair of Crebenza Cichlids and what has been most fascinating to me is how they learn how to be good parents. Sharing my experience with that coming up. Many of you may already have experience breeding Crebenza cichlids, but it is a first for me. It's been a fascinating experience. Now, when I set up my 36 gallon bow front tank, that is the fish I wanted. I have never had Crebenza cichlids and I wanted to have these in the tank. I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could get them to breed? Well, I got a lot more than I bargained for because they gave me not one, not two, but three batches of fry after only being in the tank for a few months. We're now at the end of August. I put them in the tank May 11th, 2018, and they are a harder fish to find in my area at my local fish store or the big chain pet stores. Naturally, they're from Africa, Nigeria, Benin, and Cameroon. The rumor is it's a dangerous area to collect them in. There's kidnappings, and it discourages people from going and collecting them wild, so of course they're mostly raised in the aquarium. Not sure if that rumor is true, but I wanted to share my experience in Crib Parenting 101 first, the dating scene. Now this pair here, when they're getting ready to spawn, develop a deep red under their bellies, and the female does a little belly dance for the male, a little shimmy. Now at this point in time, the male wasn't very interested, so she didn't dance too long, but I think she got a little bit better and was able to attract the male three times after this. So she's learning how to dance. Now one thing I did learn about crib pairing is that it is a marriage. Once two cribs pair together, they stay a pair unless one's removed from the tank and another one is put in, there's a chance they might pair up or if one dies, but generally they stay together for their duration. They are also very loyal to their marriage and will chase away any rogue male or females that come around. Now here's my female chasing away a rogue male that I had purchased at the same time as the pair. They don't want him in the tank so I moved him to my 20 gallon tank and then gave him to my father. So my father is enjoying him in his tank right now. Once the married couple decides to spawn, now it's time to build the crib. Now here's where I saw them learning. They tried out a variety of different places in the tank to try to figure out the best one. Now what was interesting to me at the outset is they completely ignored the Dragonstone Cave I spent five hours trying to put together and build specifically for them and instead they decided to dig a hole under a rock and I found that they like to be under rocks as opposed to in rock caves. Here's the female here coming out of her cave along with the help of the male. They do dig out the substrate and create that cave. So she created that under the rock. If you are interested in breeding cribs, I would suggest sand or a soft substrate that will allow them to dig the caves where they want it. Now the female will remain in the cave until the eggs hatch with the male guarding it. What's most interesting is they put the substrate back after the fry have hatched. They did this in all the locations in this tank that they tried. You can see the female going in and out of her cave and the male up top guarding that cave location. Now here is the second batch of fry. You can see the eggs on the outside of this dragon stone. They decided to use the cave I built, but not for the purpose intended. They went to an, the outside of this cave you can see the eggs there in the middle in that cave, as well as on the outside, not the most ideal location. I'll show you why a little bit later, but this was their second location all the way on the other side of the tank. The second time around, they seemed to do a better job guarding the eggs. There was always either the male or the female, the second and third time around, there guarding the eggs. And what was interesting is that the third time around, they picked a location near the first location. They dug out a cave under the driftwood here that I couldn't even film or get to, so I apologize for that, but there was too much plant cover, so they're getting a little craftier and a little bit better at hiding the locations of their eggs. I think a lot of that had to do with the second time around, and again, I'll show you why that was a bad location coming up. And now we get to the fun part, the hatching. So when these eggs hatch, I've noticed that I've had a lot more in the second and third batches than the first. Here's the first batch where I only had about seven to 10 fry that I saw. I don't know if they might've eaten some of the eggs. They certainly didn't in the second or third batches. This is the second batch and this was probably, even though it's hard to count, around 80 to 100 fry in this second batch. Each batch, it seems that they are guarding the fry a little bit longer, but the max being two and a half weeks. Now I did notice the second time around, they also like to take their fry on field trips 
chaperoned. Of course, throughout the tank, you can see the fry here. And this is on a chaperone field trip from the right side of the tank to the left. Now, what has also been interesting, if any fry strays too far from the pack, they will go get the fry in their mouths and bring them back to where the rest of them are. Here is the third batch. This one was about 50 or a little bit over 50 fry in this batch here. And they started to improve on how they guarded their fry. Now, what you'll see is as I get close to the aquarium with the camera, the female there is starting to shake at me. She doesn't like my presence there. She didn't do that with the first and second batches, but she clearly is telling me, don't get too close, stay away. These are my kids. Their protective nature can also get aggressive at times, and it's bad news for your other fish. You'll see that scene here in a moment where my pleco got a little too close to the fry eggs. So for two weeks, they are fierce protectors of these fry. They'll chase away any fish that gets close. Doesn't matter if you are a Siamese algae eater in that case, or a very peaceful and friendly clown loach in this case. And in this situation, now this is the second batch of eggs. My pleco was trying to get into his cave. At least someone appreciates my Dragonstone cave. But the cribs decided to put their eggs right near the pleco's cave. Not the greatest spot, and I think they learned from this, which is why the third time around they went and chose a different spot, but they fiercely went after the pleco to get him to leave the area. So even an armored bristlenose pleco, no problem. They'll go to any extent to help protect their eggs and their fry. Now the pleco was just fine, and for that period of time, he learned not to go closer to where those eggs were. Though the two crib parents got better at protecting the fry, it only lasts two weeks. After that, once they're empty nesters, the fry are out on their own and they will chase the fry away. So how are the kids doing? Well, they're doing great, considering I didn't have a grow out tank. Two survived from the first batch, five from the second, and eight from the third. No special feeding, they are living in the main tank, eating little bits of organics, rapashi, and some leftover food from wafers. What's interesting about crib fry is that your pH determines whether you're going to have male or females. If your pH is neutral at 7, you have a 50% chance of having males or females. If your pH is acidic, more likely to have females, and more alkaline, you're more likely to have males. This has all been a fascinating experience, but to answer our question, can fish learn to become better parents? It seems like this crib pair has, and as with many cribs, they do learn to become better parents. My pair are getting better choosing their location, they're having more fry, and they're getting better at protecting their fry. Now my goal with this simple grow out tank is to hopefully share some of these fry with you all. On a one-off basis, I think I'll be able to ship some of these out. And of course you can see them here on the channel to see how they're doing. So please stay in touch on this project and how that is developing. Please like, comment, and subscribe for future content. And as always folks, thanks for watching.